Hi everyone. We are all familiar with batteries. We use batteries in toy cars, remote control, cloak, etc. But how does this battery works? Before we learn about batteries, we should know what comes out of batteries. They are current and voltage. We have heard these words thousand times, but what are they? In this video, we will learn about current, voltage and something related to both of this called resistance. And finally, we will learn how does battery works. is made up of atoms. Atom has three elementary particles, protons, neutrons and electrons. The nature of material changes depends on the number of these particles. Protons and neutrons bind together to form the core of the atom called as the nucleus. The electrons rotate in pattern around this nucleus. These patterns are determined by what we call as orbits or shell. Orbits are simply paths or levels through which the electrons move. Electrons are negatively charged and they are attracted to the positively charged protons. Electrons orbit around the nucleus in these orbits and each orbit can carry a number of electrons. The number of protons, electrons and neutrons in an atom tells us which material it is. These electrons can move freely around other atoms and are called free electrons. Materials that have free electrons can pass electricity through them. Most metals like iron, copper, etc. can pass electricity through them. Materials that do not have any free electrons cannot pass electricity through them. They are called insulators like plastic, glass, rubber, etc. For an example, in a copper wire, the free electrons move randomly. But if we place it in a circuit with a power source, the free electrons start to arrange themselves and will also start to flow from the copper wire to the battery and back to the copper wire. A circuit is simply a path followed by the electrons. We can add a light bulb to this path and see that the bulb glows. If more electrons flow, then the bulb will glow brighter. So what causes this flow of electrons? The answer is voltage. Voltage comes from a power source or battery. The higher the voltage, the higher will be the flow of electrons and brighter the bulb will glow. You can imagine voltage like the pressure in a water tank. If we have full water in tank, then all the mass of the water will cause high pressure at the tap. Similarly, if the amount of water in the tank is less, then the pressure at the tap will be less. If the pressure is high, the water will flow strongly and if the pressure is low, the water will have a weak flow, just like the flow of electrons. We have talked a lot about the flow of electrons. In fact, the flow of electrons is called current. Electricity is a simple word of electric current. To use this electricity, we need current to flow in one direction in a circuit. Earlier in this video, we have talked about copper wires. Copper wires are generally used to transmit electricity because they are cheap and are also a good conductor. Now let's combine what we have learned about voltage and current and use it to light a bulb in a circuit. The most important thing is a battery. Battery can store energy. When we connect one end of the battery to the bulb using copper wires and the other end of the battery to other terminal of the bulb, it will glow. Why does the bulb glows? In the video, you can see 1.5 volt return on the battery. The V stands for volt, not voltage. Volt is the measure of voltage, just like kilogram measures the mass. Similarly, current is measured by ampere or amps. The battery is supplying a voltage of 1.5 volt. The current starts flowing in the circuit because there is a potential difference between the positive and negative terminals. 
the flowing electrons or current will get inside the bulb and will convert some of the electrical energy to light energy. The remaining electrons will go to the negative terminal of the battery. But what if we use the battery with more voltage? The light bulb we use can handle only a limited amount of current. If we use a bulb with a voltage higher than what the bulb can stand, then it will damage the bulb. While we make circuits, we will manually reduce the current from the battery using a small component called resistor. As the name suggests, resistor is a material used to resist the flow of current. We should know that resistance is a natural phenomenon. Every object has resistance towards the flow of current. Even copper wire has resistance. If we use a longer copper wire, its resistance will be higher. Resistance occurs because the flowing electrons or current will hit on atoms along its path. This will hinder the flow of electrons and thus cause resistance. Some objects have a higher resistance than others. Since resistance is caused when the electrons hit atoms, it causes heat buildup. In fact, when electricity passes through the conductor, it produces heat. We know that we should not provide voltage higher than any device can handle. While we make a circuit by our own, we can use these small devices like resistor to limit the flow of current. Every electrical appliance has labels on it tells us its voltage rating. If we look at the standard laptop charger, we will see that it works with an input voltage of 100 to 240 volt and 1.5 amps of AC or alternating current. It will then produce an output of 19.5 volts and 3.33 amps of direct current. What is AC and DC? Direct current and alternating current are two types of electric current. The current from the power socket of a home is alternating current. In this kind, the electrons do not flow in a continuous loop. Instead, it will alternate backwards and forwards just like tides in the sea. Electronic devices like laptops, smartphones run on direct current. In this kind, electrons flow in only one direction, just like the flow of water in a river. Our laptops and mobile phone chargers converts AC to DC to charge these devices. The current that reaches a home is AC since it is more efficient to transmit for long distance. We can also use transformers to increase or decrease the voltage to our liking. We will teach you the Enger electricity transmission system in another video. DC is used in small circuit devices like smartphones, laptops, since it is easy to work with. Larger appliances such as washing machine uses a combination of AC and DC. AC for the induction motor and DC for the circuit that controls the operation. If the current flowing through a wire is very high, it may burn the wire. We need to make sure that the wire we are using supports the amount of current we are passing through it. As said earlier, we can measure voltage using volt and current using ampere. These are their respective units. To actually measure their values in these units, we need devices such as digital multimeters. In earlier days, a voltmeter was used to measure voltage and an ammeter was used to measure current. Okay, now we have covered the basics of voltage, current and resistance. Now let's look how battery works to give us current. We know that battery can save energy. They store energy in the form of chemical energy and convert it into electrical energy when needed. This means that a combination of chemicals inside the battery produces the flow of electrons. The common type of battery that we use in toy cars and flashlights are called dry cell. They are available in various sizes like AA battery that we use in toy cars and AAA battery that we use in TV remotes. Basically, a battery is made up of three components, an anode which is a negative part, a cathode which is the positive part. 
and an electrolyte. In a dry cell, zinc is the negative anode, graphite core is the positive cathode and ammonium chloride paste is the electrolyte. Due to the chemical reactions within the battery, the anode builds up an excess of electrons. This causes an electrical difference or potential difference between the anode and cathode. This difference is the voltage of the battery. The electrons wants to go to the cathode since they are attracted to the positive cathodes. But the electrolyte prevents the electron from doing so. If we make a circuit with the help of a wire and a bulb, the electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode. The electrons will enter the bulb and it will glow. As time passes, the chemical reaction will change and the anode will no longer have enough electrons to supply to the cathodes. So the voltage of the battery reduces. This is when the battery dies. Rechargeable batteries are available that can convert electrical energy to chemical energy when they are put in the charging mode. These batteries can use again and again. This is how battery works. Do you know that by 2030, every new cars on the road will run on batteries? I hope you will enjoy the session. If you have any doubts and queries regarding the session, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. See you all in the next section. Till then, bye-bye.